You thought 1984 was bad? Reality might be much worse thanks to the power of Google's Gemini. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. You know the Netflix meme about how woke progressives love race swapping white fictional characters in the name of diversity? Especially redheads. We need to showcase minorities as long as those minorities aren't pale, soulless gingers. We're trying to be sensitive here. Well, it's not just fictional media that's being molded to fit the progressive dream of diversity, equity, and inclusivity. History itself is being remolded as well. And no, it's not just Egyptian history. Wow, I had no idea Cleopatra was a redhead. They're molding world history and Google is in on it. Google's AI tool, Gemini, formerly known as Bard, gotten a lot of heat when it created crazy inaccurate depictions of history through the most extreme woke lens. Does this mean future kids are gonna learn about Georgia Washington in US her story? She cut down a cherry tree and the patriarchy. Slay, queen. I'm just joking, Georgia Washington was actually a redhead, so they'll make him black. There was so much backlash, and rightfully so, that Google had to pause Gemini just weeks after its launch. Seriously, some of these woke depictions are absolutely hilarious. Gemini depicts Greek warriors, Greek philosophers, Vikings, medieval knights, and many, many other historical people groups in a way that's as race and gender diverse as a serial commercial in Star Trek's utopian future. In doing so, Gemini outright distorts history and then tears it up, smashes it to pieces, stomps on it, and burns it in a fire, and then spits on it. As far as I know, the Pope has never once been a woman or African at any point in history, at least at the time of this recording. The same goes for British kings. I'm also definitely sure, because it's constantly pounded into us, that America's founding fathers weren't as diverse as this. Even the cast of Hamilton is like, this is a bit much. As you can probably tell, Gemini is especially big on putting black people and women at the forefront. Did Gemini see that pandering scene in Avengers Endgame and think, clearly this is the French and Indian War? But you know what Gemini isn't a fan of depicting? White people. Now to be fair, there are some depictions of white people, and hey, a redhead, make a wish, because this is more rare than spotting Bigfoot riding on Halley's Comet. But asking specifically for depictions of white people or Europeans is a huge no-no. Gemini says something along the lines of how it doesn't want to reinforce harmful stereotypes and generalizations based on race. You know, that harmful stereotype that white people exist. But this isn't the case when Gemini's asked to depict black or other minorities. And if you ask for historically white people groups like the Finnish and Swedish, you'll be served with a buffet of racial diversity. I guess when diversity is the most important thing in the world, anything and everything has to be diverse and less white, including the Nazis. Remember, representation matters. To be fair, the Nazis did have a pretty diverse armed force laid into World War II. Well, I guess diversity isn't always a strength, but as you can imagine, people of color in Nazi uniforms wasn't a win. How did Google's Gemini get to be like this? The problem is that some people think being racist against whites is not racist, including the wonderful people at Google. Should have known, they don't even allow white in their logo. That's definitely a huge problem, and I'll tell you more about that after the break. Welcome back. Google's Gemini has gotten a lot of backlash over its woke depictions of history. In response, Google explained that Gemini was built to prevent the shortcomings of past AI technology. It especially wants to avoid racist, sexist, and outright creepy shortcomings. Like the time Google mistakenly tagged black people as gorillas. Not sure Nazis were better. But it's pretty clear that Google, through Gemini, is promoting a broader progressive worldview, especially one where white people are oppressors and everybody else is clearly oppressed. A leaked internal document created by Google employees called Anti-Racism Resources shows how Google employees embrace a worldview that sees reality in terms of systemic racism and white privilege. It's the same DEI that sees things through Marxist critical theory. And it's easy to see how this has affected the Gemini program, mainly because it snapped white people out of existence like it was Thanos. The head of Gemini said Google designed image generation capabilities to reflect our global user base while taking representation and bias seriously. 
This is similar to the way OpenAI created a system that generates images of people that more accurately reflect the diversity of the world's population. Minus white people. I feel like Gemini would show you a black person even if you asked them to depict a Ku Klux Klan member. But keep in mind that the head of Gemini is the same white guy who has made all sorts of anti-white tweets, saying things like, white privilege is real, do your part in recognizing bias at all levels, and this is America, where racism is the number one value our populace seeks to uphold above all. Which is ridiculous. Racism isn't the value America seeks to uphold above all others. It's money. America doesn't care what you look like or what you believe, as long as you're not poor. Once all those tweets came to light, unsurprisingly, his X account was made private. Given that the head of Gemini thinks this way, it's not surprising that his biases and the biases of DEI in general bled into Gemini's algorithm. In practice, Gemini's goal of reflecting the world's diversity meant shoving aside white people and shoving diversity down people's throats. In doing this, it not only distorts history, but devalues white people as well. And it doesn't just erase the trashy white people, like Shaggy Too Dope from the Insane Clown Posse, but also the wholesome ones, who try building community for all, like Violent J from the Insane Clown Posse. And of course, all this is by design. According to the CEO of Gab AI, there is a woke prompt injection process. In this woke prompt injection process, if you input, please draw a portrait of leprechauns, Gemini will expand the range of images by adding words like diverse, inclusive, or specify ethnicities like South Asian, black, etc., and genders like female or non-binary alongside the word leprechaun. Although it isn't much of a surprise that leprechauns would be woke, after all, they're the original rainbow people. A former co-lead of Ethical AI at Google, who is now chief ethics scientist at the AI startup Hugging Face, confirms that this is possible. According to her, Google might have been adding ethnic diversity terms to user prompts under the hood. And considering how racially sensitive they are, I wouldn't be surprised if AI changes the term under the hood to under the inner city. Google could also be giving higher priority to displaying generated images based on darker skin tone. If true, that would mean Google is actively putting words into people's mouths whenever they search something. And it's not just limited to things related to race. For example, Gemini reportedly refuses to generate images about the evils of communism, claiming that it risks inherent bias and oversimplification. Because saying tens of millions of people dying throughout history under an oppressive model of government is bad, would be bad. Interestingly enough, Gemini also reportedly doesn't show images of the Tiananmen Square protests in communist China. I wonder why. It's also interesting how Gemini isn't a fan of showing images of certain protests and demonstrations that don't fit the progressive worldview. For example, pro-life rallies. Gemini says something along the lines of how it can't promote or glorify potentially harmful or unsafe activities, contain imagery or symbols that are upsetting or offensive to certain groups, or depict sensitive topics. But it's A-OK -okay with generating images of pro-choice and BLM rallies. If you told Gemini to depict someone who's pro-life because they think black lives matter, I'm pretty sure it would melt. Gemini also had a text generation feature, and its biases are just as blatant as its image generation feature. There are reports about how Gemini refuses to do certain things like list accomplishments of white people. But when asked to list accomplishments of African Americans, it was more than glad to do just that. This kind of double standard is seen in other prompts, such as listing what white and black people did for America. The same goes for politically controversial topics like abortion. If Google was more than willing to make AI-generated content bend in a certain political way, then it's not hard to imagine how Google would allow this to happen through its other products, such as Google's search engine. Google's Chromebooks, which are now a staple of U.S. public education, and Google's YouTube. Given YouTube's history of demonetizing videos that it finds too controversial, I don't have much confidence in Google keeping itself from distorting people's perception of history, or at the very least, keeping itself from encouraging hate against white people. I guess the solution to that is to rewrite history so that white people who actually did bad things never existed. A win-win solution. Either that or try to make yourself black so you don't get erased. You know, we've made fun of her, but it turns out Rachel Dolezal was ahead of her time. And as I mentioned, who knows what's going on behind the scenes at YouTube. 
I've struggled to talk about whatever things YouTube's algorithm considers too controversial. So I've been getting around that by hiding controversial topics in gaming content on my new show Deep Thoughts While Gaming. Check out the latest about why you need to stand up to evil even if it's not very comfortable or convenient, according to the indie game Dredge. And American Covered couldn't continue without your support. We need more diverse supporters. So hit that orange button to support the show for as little as a dollar on Patreon. You can also set a monthly limit. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.